Welcome to the Two G's podcast. I'm calling it this. I've aligned with one of my favorite people in the world and one of my favorite fighters ever. He's an extraordinarily fascinating man. He was born two months after me in 1965. So we're hopefully we've gone from wild men to wise men. That will become apparent. Gary and I are starting a pilot together today. Um, and we hope to do a series of shows, maybe 12, some in person, some on Zoom like this. We've both got busy lives, but this is the pilot of the two Gs. Gary, looking handsome as ever. How are yeah. you? You're in a hotel Good. room, you look busy. What's going on? Just came in from LA. Um, was in Bulgaria before that and went to LA and just got into London and putting together a film I'm going to direct, um, which you know about because you're in it. Wow. Uh, and um, and yeah, it's just been hectic. I, I'm here for a few more days and then back to Bulgaria on the 24th. Is life mainly based in Los Angeles now? or Because obviously we know we're going to Hollywood in a minute and movies. And is, is life principally in Hollywood now or is it in the States? Is it in Bulgaria? It has, Where is it? It has been for the last 25 years, but I've just branched out to Bulgaria where they shoot a lot of American films, but I just put, uh, I, I was asked to be in a film in Bulgaria uh, as an actor and I ended up getting more involved and ended up executive producing the film. Um, and of course they shoot so many movies there from America. Anyway, there's a big American film market there, um, uh, industry there. And so I got involved. I met a fantastic lady, Desi Tenikajeva. She's like uh, royalty there. She's very, very well respected. It was her movie. And together we started putting projects together. Uh, had a very strange scenario in regards to this movie I'm going to direct now, which is I can tell you, but it's a great story. I was in Bulgaria and I we were finishing the movie and I've always been a bit of a boy, as you know, um, and I work and I'm very good and very reliable when I'm working, but when I'm not working, I often go off track sometimes. Uh, and I wondered why I used to shut down. I'd, I'd, I'd never got in trouble because I'd stay home, but I'd, I'd drink maybe a little bit too much or I'd, I'd overindulge. I've never been a drug person. So, uh, I mean, I've tried it as a kid, but I've never got into it. But I used to, I'm, I'm a little excessive. And so I was thinking, you know, I'm always trying to get better. And so um, uh, I was talking about, I'd been to see a few therapists in my life over the years to talk about, you know, I had a bit of a rough childhood and uh, and I wondered if I was the way I was because of that. Mm. And um, nothing seemed to give me answers, you know. Um, and so I, I'd seen this, um, Desi, actually, the producer, I was talking about it. She said, you know, there's a guy you should talk to. She said, I met him 10 years ago. I haven't seen him in 10 years. Don't know him that well. But I met him on a TV show. Um, he's a very famous hypnotherapist. And in fact, he goes all around the world teaching hypnotherapy to the hypnotherapists and there's colleges and universities. Mm. And I've always been fascinated with psychology, you know, hypnotherapy. And uh, uh, so I said, sure, mate. She said, maybe I'll call him. Anyway, she called him and then she come knocking on my door in the morning in tears I, this is you won't believe this I said why she said well I haven't spoken to him in 10 years I don't know anything about him he lives in the mountains there's a place in Bulgaria there's a mountain side where a lot of healing people live a lot of um, cultural healing places they say there's an energy in these mountains so mm. he'd moved from Sofia to his practices now in the mountains isolated um she said, I was talking about, I have a friend who may want to come and see you, et cetera, et cetera. And he's an actor. He was a boxer. Um, and he said, it's not Gary Stretch. And she said, how the hell do you know Gary? He said, I saw a movie that he did. I think it was Dead Man's Shoes. Um, years ago. And um, and I said, my father's a film buff. So he said, I've bit like Tarantino, I've seen every movie ever made. But he said, he said, but I just got inspired to write a film for Gary. 
Wow. So I wrote it. I wrote it. And um, she said, did you give it to him? She said, no, I was too shy. I just wrote it and never, it's the only thing I've ever written. And I forgot about it 10 years ago. So she said, that's, he said, I, I would love to work with him and meet him. So I, we got on the phone and I said, I said, I said, strange story. And he, 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 we were laughing. And I said, what is the procedure with your hypnotherapy? And he said, real hypnotherapy is not, like this he said you have to get in a space where your mind's open he said what normally happens is people come to my house in the mountains you'll spend a week working the land we ride horses we turn your phone off get you out of life and then once you get to a certain space that you're not thinking about the phone and this he said it's very serious you can't just come in you know on your computer and on the phone you've got to really check out if you want it to work we spend about a week, 10 days. He said, I have a, a house and then two cottages. You live in a cottage. You'll have your own privacy. You come to the house three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my family. I mean, very intimate. He said, and you'll probably spend a month. And I said, I don't know if I have a month. But, uh, <laughs> but he said, no, it's something. I said, and what's the cost? And he said, complimentary for you i said i said i can't come to your house for a month and eat and do therapy and ride horses you know he said no gary i, I will not accept a penny it's an absolute pleasure so i said that's not going to happen so he said well how are we going to get here because i'm not taking money from you so i said let me read your script so i read his script and it was amazing it's called upswing it's a road movie um and i called him back immediately i said we have a deal. I'll come and spend a month with you, but I'm going to make you a movie. And he couldn't believe it. And that's how the movie happened. And I think it's been a it's been a pretty easy movie to put together, which, as you know, movies are not easy to put together. But everyone who's picked it up have, have liked the film. And so it just took its natural progression. And that's really why, why I'm traveling right now is meeting investors and meeting people and, and putting the film together. I'll go back in a, in a few days and start logging out how I'm going to do it with, with people's schedule, with weather. Um, and so it, it, it's a great story for me, how it came about. A man, a man who lives in the mountains, how he got to write a film for me, I'll never know, but that's what happened. And here we are. What's his name? Uh, Ivo Veli Velikov. Okay. So just to delve very into famous, that. Very famous. His books, he's written yeah. books in very famous uh, therapist, hypnotherapist, and he deals with all kinds of uh, trauma from childhood or things or subconscious things that you you may have issues subconsciously that you absolutely don't know. A lot of the things that people don't realize are trigger based. So, mm. what happens with with um, let's say when you was a child, your mother and father had a big fight, and it was in the morning, and you just had bacon sandwiches. Mm. And associations very, very traumatic you, mm. you walk down a road in mm. west london or wherever and smell bacon and bang it now you don't have no memory of the incident but you it's in your cells you were telling me so you get a trigger and then you go and you watch tv and someone says a certain word and then it's another trigger and he said what happens with you me you get a series of triggers and eventually you just want to shut off so you might go off for a day or two and mm. and he said and so basically we find the triggers what well, once you put light on them they have no more power because obviously as a child trauma what you think is trauma what is trauma to a child when you're an adult you think you know it wasn't a big deal but at the time it's everything to a child when the you know when mother and fathers break up it's obviously not good but Life happens, relationship ends, people grow and at uh, different paces and some, you know, a couple meet and maybe someone outgrows the other. And it's OK to be friends and to move on and find someone that, you know, it's like we put so much pressure on. If you have a good relationship and it runs its course, then it's been great. And, and you're uh, growing uh, and evolving. If you're not, yes. and um, if you're not. 
they can meet someone who's on the level that may be happy at a certain style of living and you try and continue and you find, I think you find people, you attract those that, you know, you get to a certain energy space and you attract them people. If you're very negative, you, you're you going to attract negative people. Mm. You know, people always say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You know, it's, um, yeah. So, you know, there's a big stigma on, on relationships that break up. But as, as I've got older, it's life. It, the, things don't last forever, you know. Um, as long as you make the best of it and, and enjoy it. And then if, if you grow past, it's better to, you know, to, to move on, I think. When you and I have sat down and talked about this, we've said we're going to delve narrow and deep into things. So already I'm going to backtrack on a few of the things you said. Tell me about... Tell me about the month you did spend in the end. Yeah, if you did, I did, and and what it and and what it did for you. Because and then we'll then we'll get into you and well, I, I boxing started... and trauma that's in boxing sometimes, and why people get into boxing, all those things. Well, I, I'll tell you when um, I I didn't remember a lot of my childhood because you know I think as a child when it's painful you block it out, and I think people who have had certain traumas you don't remember things you like like i said before it's in your cells but uh and you get triggers but you don't i didn't remember much but i knew it was painful i knew i loved my mother she left she ran away with another man and my father raised three boys and um you were seven was, weren't you seven eight nine yes yeah seven, eight, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh you know it's very funny, formative very formative time and and if i can just put plant this in there being loved growing up is as i've got older i say we're the same age we're 59 this year both of us the love of your mother and father can be so pivotal on your decisions in life and where you go absolutely and um and the thing is with me i was a i was a, a not a big boy you know slim and normal average kid i was not a i, I was a i think I, my father said i was always a bit of a boy a bit of a you know a bit of a handful but when my mother left, I started to get in trouble. Probably, rascal. Be a rascal. Probably, probably screaming for attention, you know, because yeah. I wasn't getting it. So I started getting in fights. And and at one point, there was a bully at the school a few years older than me. And he, he had an issue with my brother. And I went off and, and uh, we ended up fighting. I ended up smashing his head in a Kit Kat machine. He had stitches. He was a much bigger boy three, four years older than me. And at that time, it was a big age difference. Mm. And um, everyone freaked out. And, uh, you know, he had like 13 stitches or something. I don't know. And they sent me home from school. And the head, and my dad had to go in. And and my dad wouldn't go in. I told him what happened. He knew about the kid. He said, fuck yeah. him. He was like, yeah. so I went to work with my dad in the van for a week. It was great with the boys. <laughs> I used to sit on his knees and drive. My he was dad a was plumber, wasn't he? He was. That was and a plumber. Like racer. <laughs> he was, a, he was a, one of the chaps. So he was happy. I was home with him for a week. So I'm in the car and dirty my face, plumbing every day. It was great. But eventually the headmaster came to the house. And it's a little neighborhood and one couple of schools. And he said to my dad, look, why have you not come in? He said, I'm too busy. He said, I work 24 hours trying to raise three lads yeah. on my own. <laughs> um. He said, I know what happened. The guy is a bully and he picked on the wrong kid. And my boy took, uh, he didn't do anything wrong. And the headmaster said, I understand. We all love your son. He's a good kid. But lately he's been getting in a lot of trouble. And so my dad told him, that, you know, his mother left. He said, I'd heard small town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And basically the idea was to, he said, I'm going to, I have an idea. If you want him to come back to school, we have to introduce him to a new found friend named Discipline. And uh, that was a small boxing gym near the house. And uh, I was listening on the steps of the, on the staircase. And, I, and because I was told I had to go or they'd planned it, there was no way I was going to do it. So, so my dad said, you're going to start boxing four days, five days a week. I said, not, not a chance. So he literally dragged me to the gym and I stood in the corner like this and I wouldn't hit the bag. I wouldn't do a thing. And the, and my dad gave me a little crack and the trainer said, Le leave him with me. Let me handle him. So nine months, Gareth, I didn't do a thing. <laughs> and, uh, and eventually I was bored out of my mind. 
and uh, I remember, and he, uh, my dad used to pick me up every night and say, how, how was he today? And the trainer said, great. And I looked at the trainer, it never snitched on me. Wow, brilliant. And I, fell, I fell in love with him. You know, he Absolutely, like, your best learned, friend. My best friend, I trusted yeah. him. He had yeah. my back. Yeah. And one day after months, uh, I was looking through the window. Uh, he, there was an office with a glass window, Mr. Freeman, his name. And I looked through the window and he, and I, and he said, so I walked over, he said, he said, do you want to try a little bit today, son? I said, yes, sir. And he wrapped my hands, I'll never forget it. It was the most intimate thing. I remember the smell of his perfume. I remember the Brill cream in his hair. He had a little taste of beer on his breath, maybe in the afternoon, he had a pint. And uh, we went on this journey together and the rest is history. But um, he, he was someone very, very dear to me and changed my life, yeah. Um, this, is, this is in this is in St Helens, Lancashire, of course. Um, yeah. Um, bring that back to we we were talking about the hypnotherapy. So let, so, and, so, and, so what, and the and what yeah. happened in that month? So what I found in the I always um, I always felt when my mother left that I, like I, I felt it's a strange thing that that. There was like a hole in my heart. A restlessness? Yes, and like a hole in my heart. Yeah, it's a yeah. weird thought, but it's mm. it always in my mind. Mm. I had a hole in my heart. And and I went on this journey trying to, I was very insecure. I thought I was rubbish. If I was worth something, she wouldn't have left. You start to blame yourself. All Imposter things. syndrome. Imposter syndrome, and which all, we know and a lot about now, you know? And all this stuff I learned in the in the hypnotherapy was how mm. I felt. So I started getting feelings as a child mm. through hypnotherapy of how I felt, and um, and so it, I no matter how many men I stood above, I'd knock this guy out. And this it never filled the hole, you know. I never felt worthy. I never felt any good at anything I've ever done. I, I, I still have that syndrome, but me me too. By the way, we've talked about this together. Me too as yes. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of, I don't want to sound like an idiot, but a lot of really successful people or driven people, um, I'm doing a documentary which I showed you, and it's based on um, how insecurity and, 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 and fear and shame, if handled in the right way is a very powerful tool to make people great because it gets you up in the morning I mean, and, it, and it, there's something there to harness I mean, but it's almost like you can't invent it if you go into your withdrawal you're dragged back out of it by a desire to come back and and succeed in it again for me if i'm absolutely exhausted from something i need to retire once i've had a couple of days off there's this surge of electricity back where it's a life force. The life force is driving you again. And I think if you've managed to hone your skills at something, or you've got curiosity for something new, or you're inquisitive about things, which we both are, because we know that about each other, and you want to evolve, explore, develop, love, feel, all those things, you're coming back to something new afterwards. Yeah. And so that 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 was something and I learned you know, at a very young age that, um, sure, I'm a, a, you know, I come from a little town. Everyone said, you'll never make it. You'll never do it. And that was a massive driving force. I used to get up in the morning, five o'clock at eight, nine years of age, running up the hills and had this driving force that said, mm. I'll prove everybody wrong. And and it, and it, it was a driving force I still kind of had. Um and I learned to hone it and, and understand, yeah, it, it, it is insecurity, but it's powerful. I won't let it, it's like fear is an amazing thing if you use it. If a deer can jump 20 feet with a lion chase, it can jump 30 feet. So that mm -hmm. adrenaline and that fear gives it 10 feet more. So it, it, I was afraid every fight I ever had, but it, I wasn't a coward. So, okay, I'm afraid, but I, I can deal with that. I'm still going to fight to the best of my ability. And... And and I trained and I got up every day and I worked hard, and um, 
And it was a great part of my, you know, everyone says, don't be afraid. I don't, no, be afraid. It's okay. But just learn to, you know, false evidence appearing real is what mm. I call, it. you mm. know, it's a, thoughts. thoughts are not real. They're just thoughts. You may think you're rubbish. You may feel this, you may feel that, but it's just a thought and they pass. And if you learn to digest and understand and take a little, you see, the problem is with most people, and it's life is they never spend their own time looking inside, you know, working they, on themselves as they would call it in LA working TV, on, on the phone, on the, you know, do, and it, so they never get well. And I think, you know, you get to a certain, I know you're a very spiritual person. I think, you know, you have to, it's tough to sit in a room for a few hours and just, deal with what's in your head you know but and i think uh, men i think men might I, I don't know whether i'm right here but i think in this whole process i think maybe it's changing but men find it harder to do that and be on their own than perhaps women do even i may be wrong on that but my own meandering experience has taught me that women have this core because they're women um because they're mothers because they nurturing yeah yeah they have that nurturing where they 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 almost have got it whereas you know, my, my experience of COVID, for example, I, I didn't see anyone for about seven weeks, you know, out in the sticks. It was quite, it was dark, but then it was an amazing experience. Amazing. Oh, I can do everything on my own. I can go and cycle on my own, paddle on my own, shop on my own, think on my own, get into myself. And I think when you spend enough time with yourself, you get to like, like you say, you get to like parts of yourself. Oh, that's good about me. Whereas when you're with company all the time, you don't perhaps. And I think that speaks to what you're saying. Yeah. And it's funny, COVID destroyed a lot of relationships and it enforced and, and mm -hmm. renewed a lot of relationships. And what it basically did is made people realize who they live with. You know, is this a positive? Is and, it why? A and why? <laughs> yeah. And why? So, and some people after you know after the lockdown and the, they've been they drove each other crazy they knew they were shouldn't be together and other people fell in love who maybe were not so close before but they found each other so you know it, it's a you know it's a, people don't spend that time and we, I, you and I are brought up in a society and and an environment where no one talks about feelings and all of that my dad you know if you if you cried, you something wrong with you. You know what I mean? It was like yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't show any. any well, of that. well, well. Also, you, you, just to, just to, we've got seven minutes left on this one. By the way, we're going to leave them gagging for more. You went to a grammar school, Cowley, very famous sporting school. Ray French went there. Lots of rugby players went there. Um, I went to a private boarding school, public school, um, and I think you were taught to be tough. You were taught to take your knocks. You you weren't taught to, uh, taught to you weren't taught to express your feelings. Although naturally, I want to. Um, and just to put a now I, now I want to. No, me, not... no, me too. Yeah. Me so much because you know um, there's there's a wisdom in it. There's a there's a it's like opening the tap to the rest you, doesn't matter. And then you fill up again. And then you fill up again. And I mean, to your point just now, just so I can put the balance on the other side. My mum and dad are both still alive. They're both still together. They've been had their ups and downs, but they really are close to being two of my very best friends on both hands, They're easily. Wow. And um, I take their wisdom, their counsel, and the older I get, and the more I love my own daughters and my grandchildren, the more I realize how lucky I am that both my parents love me so much. Yes, I rebelled. I didn't want to go in the foreign office. I didn't want to go in the Hong Kong police force, things my dad wanted me to go in the Navy for three years on a short service commission. I didn't want to do them. I was too wild to do that. I was too much of a scallywag and a rascal and a rebel. I'd be a guerrilla army, not in the, the kind of conscripted army. That's just, no, it's just that mentality. But what I've realized is all I ever had was love. And I think, again, I've got a restlessness that I want to work out. I wouldn't mind going up into the mountains for a month. Um, you'll you'll meet him, obviously, when we do the movie. And I'm sure if you get <laughs> some time, 
I can throw you in the in the cottage for a week and exactly. uh, or two. I think um, you ought a month. I think you'll need to ten days. We 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 are going to do twelve of these over thirty minutes. There'll be lots more. I my notes today because I'm I'm kind of exec producing us if you like. Um, Gary Stretch from fighter to film star, why boxing calls and the movement to films to have a glimpse into your boxing career um, and the switch in life. What did boxing teach you about acting? What drives the warrior spirit? Anthony Hopkins, Angelina Jolie, Colin Farrell, um, Mickey Rourke's a friend. You've acted with these guys. You mentioned Dead Man's Shoes. That was 2004. We have run out of time almost, okay? We're going to get into all those subjects next time. I think if we don't get into something narrow and deep with the two Gs, because that's why, because whenever you and I sit down, we start a million conversations with a thousand, or a thousand conversations with a million, a million threads to them, and we always talk deep and it's and it's an extraordinary thing and it is a meeting of brothers and it is a meeting of shared intelligence and spirituality and um i just hope people have enjoyed this first one do you want to finish do you want to finish off no i'm happy finally to get to spend time with you and this for me is not like work it's like fun and two friends two brothers just having fun and talking about stuff that matters and Hopefully, uh, if we can shed light to, to anyone uh, to to put some some light on any situations when people feel unsatisfied, alone, or whatever. If you know, once you see that, you know, everybody, most of the great people that people aspire to be come from much worse situations than you. And so if they could do it, I promise you, you can do it. And so hopefully we can get into some conversations to let people know that they are more than capable of doing whatever they want to do. If they want to work and they're willing to work for it, they can have anything they want. You're the fighter and the actor. I'm the writer and the broadcaster. Just tease them for the next one we're going to do, and it will be very soon. What's tougher, boxing or acting? I'll let you know next time. Okay, we'll do it next time. G, the two Gs. Hopefully people will want more. It's great to speak to you. That 30 minutes rolled by. Got it, brother. See you later. See you later.